Hi everyone and welcome. Uh, I am here with Maki, Marco Cepak, and Ricardo Carion. Hi. And this is our first attempt to record something in front of a camera. We decided to call it uh, Jazz Guitar District, which is a kind of ideal place to talk about our passion, which is guitar. Yeah, we like to. Um, uh not to talk just to ourselves all, all the time and mm. we like to share it to the world to you so anything if you want to write comments or anything any questions we would like to reply yeah. and any yeah. ideas anything we would like to share <laughs> so uh, we are just trying to understand what we really want to do but i hope anyway you can understand what we are going to explain and today we decided to talk about the Dorian mode in C and how to improvise in this context. So, um, would you like to play Dorian mode? Yeah, so I, play, Dorian mode. I play the C minor chord for you and you play the notes and you can also download the PDF file if you want from our Facebook group Jazz Guitar District and uh, you will find the link in the description here on YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, so I play for you the C minor 7 chord. So I'm playing. It's a, it is actually the, the minor scale that's, that's the closest to the major scale. Hmm. In, a, in a major tonality hmm. from the seven modes. Yeah. So it only has flat third and flat seven. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. it's similar to a major scale, but with the flat, flat third and flat, and flat seven. seven. Yeah. yeah, this is a, a way to think. I mean, because the other minors <coughs> in, this, in the major tonality have other no altered notes. Yeah, in fact. This, this we will talk about have. them yeah. in other episodes. Yeah. This is the first one and we would like to talk about Dorian. So this is the scale. Um, would you like to explain degrees that we play in the scale? Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's one, nine, two, second, major nine, major nine, flat three, four, perfect fifth, major six, this, yeah, is, this is the characteristic important. note of yeah. the Dorian, flat seven, which is the characteristic of the yeah, minor, yeah, yeah. So maybe the, the most particular note in this case is the major sixth yeah, on this yeah. minor seventh chord. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because yeah. we are used to play when we when we think of minor seven chord, we think always one flat three five flat seven. Yeah, but this one yeah. has this, yeah with this particular sound. We can play the major sixth That's, or major thirteenth. Yeah, we have two names for this degree yeah. for this note. Yeah. Okay, so <coughs> talking about notes, did you, um, uh, you were saying now only degrees, I think, would you, or do you say also notes? <laughs> I don't say notes, I don't say notes. C, D, E flat, F, G, A, B, flat, flat, yeah. yeah. Okay, so this is the sound, would you like to improvise something, just a few okay. notes? Yeah. So, explain what you just did what what, what in, in an um, easy way the first process in your mind when you improvise on a scale like this what is what I, I, I actually thought about the, the chords uh, the notes of the chord hmm. so I thought about the arpeggio the arpeggio one first. flat free five six okay so and the first um, approach. and then the scale and mixed the notes from the scale but mostly um, 
as using uh, the chord notes as target notes. Okay. So I can I can play the scale and do some intervals inside the scale. Yeah. Or intervals of fifth. That, but I would um, I would um, use target notes as so yeah. as the notes to to rely to, to get the sound of the Dorian sound. Yeah. Yeah. But do you usually uh, hear these notes in your mind yeah. before yeah, playing course, them? Of course, of course. So you try to sing in some yes, way yes, some melodies yes, yes. connected with all of these thoughts that you that's right. Can That's have right. Yeah. intervals yeah. and arpeggios. I always hear this, the characteristic 13 or 6. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, the same that I do when I yeah. improvise. Mostly try to connect uh, my musical uh, thoughts, my, my melodies in my mind, mm -hmm. to what I can play on guitar, of course. So the beginning suggestion could be sing the scale. Sing the scale, yeah. yeah. And try then try to play it in some different positions. Ah, okay. So, for example, how many positions do you know to play a Dorian? I mean, um, I uh, do not have any holes on my neck, you know, yeah. to, to really know every corner. Yeah. Because w when you improvise, and you find yourself in a certain position of the neck. Yeah. In in the certain in this, for example, in the Dorian chord. Yeah. And you don't want to ruin your idea, your musical idea, because maybe you don't know where to go. Where to go? Yeah. yeah. So I would like I, I like to know every corner. Yeah. So uh, to me, I think um, the easiest way is to think as the the roots. Yeah. Like on the on the last two strings yeah maybe maybe this is not the right way but this is how i, I like to think like yeah. the root is here the root is here and according to this root i would like to know the arpeggio of the dorian mm -hmm. so in every uh way so you know you can go one three five yeah. or one three five yeah or one three five yeah or we can go here one three five yeah and therefore we we proceed yeah, yeah no. this is six yeah. Oh, yeah. and so uh, and then I try to connect the like I see here one three this is one three you know yeah but I see here five so I could go or yeah different ways to yeah like play this. the same yeah. arpeggio so we can yeah. play like okay like while I for example for doing this I have a a slightly different approach mm -hmm. because I mm, prefer to find prefer that is okay for me too but I look in each position um, five frets mostly and um, for the combinations of, of fingerings that I find to play those notes at the end you know so I play uh, the, the arpeggio in the first box then I move it to the second yeah. and I play then so I move to the this. third and I go on always chromatically to look for different shapes. So you, you, you actually, same. yeah, you play every angle. Of every the angle, yeah, yeah, yeah this is very important to me yeah, too, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, I also did uh, this uh, box. I mean, this is the basic, yeah, you, you, yeah. Need to, you need to do in, in the box of the five frets maybe. Five frets, Or yeah. four frets, I don't and then and then you eventually you you start playing like horizontally yeah, and in fact, uh, yeah in fact. connecting the boxes yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. also along the strings yeah, yeah. i was checking uh, uh, for example to play a minor 7 chord i was checking this uh, game of combinations playing two notes on a string and three notes on the other so for example if i start from c and I play from G, sorry, to play C minor seventh always. So the notes are C, E flat, G, and B flat. Yes. And then I start from G because it's the lowest one that we have on, on guitar. And I play G, B flat, two notes on this string. Then I go on the next and I play three notes C, E flat, and G. And then I play two notes B flat and C. And on the next I play three notes. Then I play two notes and then three. And doing this 
we can play in a really extended arpeggio. Yeah. To, to, and we can do the same also inverting. So playing three notes, for example, on the lowest, and then two notes, and then three notes, and then two notes, and then three notes, and then two notes. So this is something I discovered just uh, thinking to numbers and where to place notes. So if we play two and three, it could be nice for an arpeggio with up to the seventh. Yeah, and, and it's, the seven. uh, you can also start with two for every string. Yeah, of course. So it's very symmetric. Yeah, you have like, yeah. And you have the same pattern. Yeah, yeah. So, so we are playing just arpeggios, not yeah. scales not in scales, this case. Yeah. And they are kind of pillars that we can use to build a melody uh, in each harmonic setting. So uh, in this case, Pillars are root, minor third, perfect fifth, mm -hmm. and minor seven. Yeah. And the other three notes mm -hmm. are extensions. Extension notes, yeah. Yeah, and we call it ninth D note, perfect eleventh or perfect fourth, the F note, and major thirteenth or major sixth, the A note. Which is the most characteristic. In this case, that the most distinguished. Uh, yeah. And, uh, Dorian mode to other yeah yeah minor chords. so we were talking about positions so we have found two different ways to work in or more than two different yeah. ways the boxes five frets yes and your way is um, starting yeah. from roots yeah. and looking for for our page yeah, like using the visual concept of the guitar yeah. because I'm, I mean the horn players cannot do that, but I, yeah. I, I always want to take advantage of the visual concept. Yeah. But it becomes kind of midi to me then, the, like I see everything in, in shapes. But the most important thing is that I, I can hear what I see. Yeah, yeah. So if I think Dorian, I, I, I take, okay, this is C, C, and I see uh, the 1, 3, 5, 13, and yeah. All around these two, these two roots, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, I can hear, I can hear what I see. Yeah, yeah. It's it's kind of guitaristic way. Yeah. <laughs> so we, um, I would like to remind you that uh, we are going to create a PDF file for some of the topics that we are talking about here, and just some of them because uh, there are too many, maybe sometimes. So just to have some information about um, where we play some of the material that we are uh, playing here as an example. So uh, remember that you will find this PDF file following the link in the description. It will be on our Facebook group Jazz Guitar District and there you can download every PDF file going to the file section in the PDF in the group. Okay, so would you like to improvise for a while? Okay, on C minor seven. Um, maybe can you um, improvise using one technique? I don't know. Maybe intervals. Maybe. Just intervals. Just just to create a sound that we can understand how yeah. you build it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe some intervals. Which okay. interval do you want to do? Well, let's start with the thirds. Which thirds. is thirds. So okay, uh, okay. So thirds means that we are he Maki is not going to play the scale note after the other, one note yeah. after the other, but skipping one note. Yeah. So if we play it root, then he will play third. And then from the second. Yeah. yeah, that's the sound that we are going to create. And let's let's check it. Okay. okay. I play the chord for okay. you.
So different sounds within the same scale. Yeah, yeah. Just because you are organizing these sounds using different interval, different yeah. intervals. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So this is really it's, something it's important. It's like melodic cells, and uh, mm. that you develop your yeah. 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 For um, for example, I usually when I practice this uh, kind of uh, topic topic, uh, I try to sing it while I play. Mm -hmm. So if I play third, <laughs> just to be aware of the sound of these intervals, and if I play fourth. <laughs> And so on and I try in this way to create a mindset um, to reach the level where I can play something in my mind before playing it mm -hmm. on my guitar yes you actually you um, record yourself in your brain the sounds yeah the sound yeah. the sounds it's yeah. not it's not too much of thinking what I'm doing now, like for it's the sounds yeah, that you yeah. you. And what, in your opinion, the best way to record these sounds in your brain? I mean, your brain when the brain hears, it records, so it's yeah. just practice. But just I have a theory about this. Oh really? The slower you go, as the slower the, the slower you go, uh -huh. the faster you learn. Yeah. when it's about sounds that's that's for sure but that's the this is for everything i think because yeah. the brain the brain really absorbs like 100 percent everything yeah. when you go slower yeah. if you go fast there is always something missing yeah. and yeah, uh, yeah. and maybe true. about sounds talking about sounds maybe also mm, thinking about some impressions that you have when you play thirds and some other impressions that you could have if you play fourths. Does it sound more? Does it sounds more open, yeah. more strict, more soft, more I don't know different uh, yeah, yeah. impressions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To me, fourths uh, sound more sharp, not so soft. Yeah, fourth. yeah. Uh, and thirds are sound almost like uh, playing a scale. Yeah. Like scalar way of thinking, yeah. not interval way of yeah. sound. Uh, but the force is really open, open, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because you know the inversion of four is fifth, yeah, and it sounds like. And the sixth are really yeah. melodic yeah. to me, for yeah. example. So yeah. when you want to create something really melodic, if you use some sixths in yeah. your improvisation, you six can are the yeah are the most melodic yeah. Yeah. to me. And anyway, these are just opinions because everyone could have a different sensibility yeah. and can find his or her own uh, levels to 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 put on each interval on each sound on yeah. in music i think so yeah. these are our personal opinions yeah, yeah. but i would uh, invite everybody to 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 really try to play all the intervals in every position of the neck yeah uh, so the brain is recording the sounds but also you are really uh, learning the positions at the same way yes, in the same that's way true. That's yeah. True. yeah so um, if you start here then you go here and then you play fourth and you play fifth sixth every position and um, you really you really you're really learning very well the positions while the brain is recording the sounds. The sounds. Yeah, yeah in fact we are going to connect some movements that we do on guitar with some particular sounds yeah. and the more we connect these two things the more we are going to play uh, melodies that melodies, we can right. imagine yeah. in our brain yeah. first. Yeah. So this is really cool. So another thing that we wanted to talk about is how a Dorian mode could be similar to a minor pentatonic scale, for example. That's right. yeah. Because in the Dorian mode we also have the minor pentatonic scale. If I play these notes, I am 
playing the arpeggio, if I add the perfect fourth, I am playing the minor pentatonic scale in C. So, yeah. So you're just, just with, the, with the pentatonic scale, you add the like fourth, the fourth. perfect fourth, F in this case. Which would be like this sound. Yeah. This kind of sound where Maki is playing the, the fourth on top. Yeah, yeah. And so, when we play the pentatonic scale, we are just avoiding playing the ninth, the major ninth, and the major thirteenth, yeah. which are the other two notes that we need to play the Dorian mode. That's right. Yeah. So we just took out the second, the ninth, and the thirteenth, and it becomes yeah, it becomes pentatonic. Yeah, and yeah. you add. So if you already know the fingerings for a pentatonic scale, for example, in C you can add the major 9th and the major 13th and you're playing the Dorian mode. This could seem easy, yeah. but as we talked now, uh, you can start practicing intervals on the scale, we can start uh, seeing the scale, mm -hmm. we can start improvising using only some kind of intervals, we can concentrate our attention on which notes are taken from the arpeggio, the basic arpeggio, which are the pillars of mm -hmm. our melodies and so on. So the Dorian mode could seem something really simple, basic, but to tell the truth, it, it is not because we can really play a lot of different things. Yeah. Right? yeah. And we can try to connect with these sounds, which is maybe the most important aspect of music. Of course. Of not course. only fingers moving on, on a fretboard, yeah, yeah. Running on a fretboard. Yes. Yeah. And um, I mean, when you are learning any scale, like we were talking about minor, uh, it's not only learning the fingering; it's also memorizing the grades according to the root. This is something very important to me. Yeah. I mean, to me, it's not like just learning. It's like, okay, this is free according to this, because it's the distance of yeah, minor, third. minor third. Okay, this is fifth. Yeah. Okay, I can get fifth here also. So in this way it would be. Okay, this is fourth. It could be like, like this. Yeah. The fifth could be... So, so it's, it's not only the fingering of the scale that I learned, but it's also the sing according to the root, where is the fifth, where is the fourth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This map, this kind this of map. map yeah. This map is of, really important yeah. because when you improvise, a lot of times you don't you don't think of scale. You yeah. you just know the okay it's Dorian. Mm -hmm. So where is the minor third? Where is the six yeah. according to my yeah. to my uh, bass, to my roots. Yeah, yeah all over the neck, where is the six, you know, yeah, okay, it's this, it's, it's this, yeah. according to, you know, oh, oh this is not, so, like yeah. this. A, a good exercise that I try to do, also with my students at school, is based on playing a really easy pattern that um, touches all the notes of the mode, something similar to this. one in particular, not similar, this one, which is root minor third, perfect fifth, minor seventh, and root one more time, then only the arpeggio going up, and then coming back down with the major thirteenth, perfect eleventh, major ninth, and the then extensions. minor third and perfect fifth to close the phrase on the harmony of this C minor seven. Oh, so it's arpeggio? <laughs> You're going up, down using extension notes. Yeah. Yeah. Six, eleven, nine. Yeah. And then and third then. and fifth. Third and fifth. Ah. So it's but without the root, you know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. And then I I suggest practicing it in each fingering. So if I play it, then I move it. So you are moving like now from yes, six to I'm, I'm going seven to in six. the different boxes. Yes. Yeah. So in the first box, then I start from the second fret. Then I move to 
the third. You would shoot with the same one, right? No, it's a little bit different because, ah, because it's, on, yeah. it's on a different fret. And then yeah. I go on the fourth, which is the same, uh, the fifth, of course. And then I go on the seventh fret, and then and so on. Yeah, just so just to be aware of each degree of the pattern. Yeah, because you keep in play. mind the, the degrees of the yeah, pattern. In fact. This is very nice. Yeah. And, yeah. and then the next idea is to transpose it to each key, but mm -hmm. this is a different topic that we, we don't want to, the, to talk about today. Okay, so uh, just to show something more, what chord can we use to comp on a Dorian mode, which is your favorite, maybe? I mean, uh, you can for... you can uh, you can use the tetrads, but mm -hmm. you switch the seven to six or the fifth oh, to okay. the six. So this is your approach. So it becomes a minor six. This is just an idea. It becomes yeah. a minor six. Minor six. Yeah. So every every tetrad that you learn, yeah. One like this is one. But you do you do this uh, moving the minor seven to the sixth? Or you play the sixth instead of the minor seven. Do you want yeah. to, to, to? Sometimes I would skip both yeah. if I if I move fifth to six. Ah, okay, that's another yeah. good approach. Sometimes yeah. I move yeah. seven to six. Is yeah. Different, so. yeah, 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 that's cool. Yeah. So can you play? Yeah, I mean, the, if, if the, this the is most cool. most popular position mm -hmm. for you, <laughs> the basic position for you of a C minor 7, if you have and one. The most basic positions would be drop two tetrads, I think. Can you play? So... Okay, this is a minor uh, 7. These are, the, these are the inversions of minor 7. Yeah. The, the basic tetrads. Yeah. One, yeah, yeah. one, three, five, seven. Yeah. With the second highest note dropped an mm -hmm. octave down. Because it's easier to because play. I, I usually play this position when I want someone to be sure about a, a really Dorian mode, and sometimes I alternate. Yeah, this, this is more advanced. Nine. This is more advanced. Ah, okay, but I was talking about how to sound Dorian. How to sound Dorian, yeah. For, for a minor 7th chord. Yeah, I mean, I, I started with, with... and now I think you, you, you did this. Yeah. Yeah, to me that would be like a tetrad. Yeah. Or maybe in this position. Yeah, it's not. Uh, you moved... you moved 5 to 6. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in fact. And, and you can seven, play the root. 7 to 9. Yes. And play the root. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You moved 7 to 9 and 5 to 6. Yeah. yeah, maybe an easier way is also this one, which is really yeah. easy because yeah. I'm playing the C minor 7 that everyone knows, but with my pinky I play the A note yeah. on the second string yes. just to have this sound. Yeah. Or you can start only with the, the guide notes 1, 3, 7. Mm -hmm. And uh, just lower the six, yeah. and maybe then you can you can repeat the third or use an extension nine yeah, yeah. or one or three or eleven. Yeah. So now nice sounds that we yeah. can use. But the approach, you know, the, from the Tetris is just moving the seventh to, mm -hmm. you know, or or you can I mean you can move seven to six. You can also move five to six. That would be. Yeah. Or you can you can also move nine. To, yeah, if of you, course. Then one you to can. nine. You get you get this. I moved five to six, one to nine, and kept the seventh. Yeah. But I the bass. So many positions on yeah. guitar. Yeah. Of course, we, we can. Yeah. Find. But, but basically, maybe the the basic advice could be play. In some way, find a way to play minor third, minor seventh, root, and the major thirteenth so right. somewhere on, on the yeah, but guitar. A, a, any any anything you develop is is from the very basic stuff. Yeah. So to me, when you when you go really advanced, it's actually always thinking of the basic stuff. Yeah. Step up first. Yeah, yeah, and then you yeah. move. I totally agree. Because a lot of lot of times I don't I don't use shapes that I'm used to. I just mm -hmm. do in the moment. Yeah. 
And the thing that I really like, if I played a Dorian sound, I, I wouldn't play so often all the notes. Yeah. I would, I would, I would do this because it, it creates movement. You split it in, in to the split it in, into, in into, into the two, two by, by because. This is another topic. Yeah. We yeah. will talk maybe in another video. So Maki, what do you think? Is it? This is an experiment for us, so if you like, uh, please write a comment or push the like button. And if you are not, subscribe if you want. We, we, we are sharing our thoughts because guitar and music are, uh, is our, our passion yeah. and we want to, to, to share it. Yeah, we really like to share everything with you, so Please write comments, please write questions, yeah. anything. And this you video... Know. Yeah, sorry, Mark. No, I just say uh, anything you want to know. And maybe also they, they can suggest what they would like to oh, talk of course, about. Oh, of course, if we can. Yeah. <laughs> if you can talk about, yeah. about what you suggest, yeah. it, it would be nice. Um, remember that um, we are doing this, we are now beginning this path together, doing these videos. And you can find the videos on two different channels because we were we are going to upload it on Maki's channel and on my channel. So if you want to subscribe to both, you know that we will surely appre appreciate it. And you can find the links in the description for That's our it. channels. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Um, cool. I think I don't yeah. know. It's an experiment, experiment. <laughs> but if you like it, please let let us know. Okay. See Bye. you See in the next video. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.